Hello, my name is Kim. I'm the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library and welcome to CT Pages. We are here with Melissa from the Hamden Public Library who is going to tell us about a community hot spotting program that we are really excited about. Sit down, put your listening ears on so you can take a page from another library's book. Melissa, thank you for coming. I'm super pumped to hear about this because it sounded great on the interest form. Well, thank you, Kim, and, and I love that page from another library. Very well done. <laughs> uh, so I just want to share the story how we got to doing community hotspotting and uh, give credit to where credit is due. Uh, it all began with sheltering in place, as I'm sure almost everybody in library land experienced. Um, there was a real mm, feeling with library staff and with the community, what do we do about people who don't have the wherewithal to connect, to get to the internet, to use a computer? How do we respond to that? And almost every library in the state amplified their Wi-Fi um, so that our parking lots became outdoor libraries, which was a great theme. But as a library director, I received calls almost every day from somebody in the community saying, please open up the library, I need to do my taxes please open up the library. I want to apply for unemployment. Please open up the library. I'm bored and I want to go shopping, which to me is just as valid as paying your taxes or anything else because, you know, what one person finds relaxing for their anxiety and stress is anxiety and stress relief for that person. That's important. So, um, I bumbled through a couple of times opening up the library in secret and letting people in. And realized that was a mistake, as every library director out there is now cringing, going, oh, no, she did not. Yes, I did. Um, and um, realized, you know, can't do that. So I reached out to the Hamden Public Schools and said, you know, we have an issue. Um, I understand that you're connecting all of your students with devices. And how's that going? And what are you finding about connectivity? with your students have devices, do they also have the means to connect? And the school system was very um, forthcoming with their information. And they said, well, quite frankly, most of our students have the wherewithal to connect. There's only maybe four areas in the town where it's hard to connect. Um, and we're trying to figure out how to work with those families or those students on connectivity. And one thing that you should know about Hamden, geographically, it's huge. Um, we have seven towns that border us, including New Haven, um, and we also have really high hills and steep wooded areas where sometimes even getting a, a cellular um, ability to make a phone call is really difficult. So there's challenges, um, both physical challenges and then there's also economic challenges. We are like a very good microcosm of the rest of the state of Connecticut with vast um, in, inequities in income. Um, so I was sitting in a meeting. I don't remember the exact meeting. And I remember, I think it was Hartford, talking about how they were starting to think about lending out hotspots to um, not just patrons, but perhaps to businesses, I think it was. And just at that time, we qualified for the Everybody Learns um, money from the state. So thank you very, very much uh, for that, that money. That's where the idea was planted and the actual fertilizer came. And I started thinking, well, we check out hotspots and we had been lending hotspots. We were now in the contactless phase of library services where we were lending things out contactlessly, including our hotspots. But the frustration was a hotspot only goes out for two weeks, then comes back. And it's only for that person. And if that person is lucky enough to tell all their friends and family, hey, I have the hotspot, let's all hang out for two weeks, then <laughs> that's great. But in reality, how often does that happen? So um, I called up one of our partners here in town, which is the Keith Center. And the Keefe Center in Hamden is really the human services department for Hamden. They handle a lot of our 
the town's programs, heating assistance, they run a food bank, they do all sorts of works with, with the community. And um, they have a wonderful head of community services and outreach. And I said, listen, I have some money coming through for a grant. We really want to increase connectivity to people. We want to do it in such a way where as many people can take advantage of it as possible. Um, what's going on in the town that we're not aware of? And basically what I heard was that there were businesses that were struggling um, to not to attract clients so much, but they were just struggling because every business was struggling at the time. Um, that there were people who did not have kids in school, so they were not receiving computers, they were not receiving, uh, they did not have a device to connect or connect reliably. Um, and then the third was, uh, we tried to brainstorm about maybe developing outdoor computer labs. And we ran into a whole bunch of zoning difficulties with that and safety difficulties because we were going to do heat lamps and propane and all this beautiful stuff. Um, and we just realized that would eat up most of our money and it just wasn't reliable. So we thought, why don't we go to these businesses where people hang out for a while and ask them if they would like to host a library hotspot. And all they have to do is put up a poster saying Wi-Fi connectivity provided by the Hamden Public Library. That's all. We would pay for the subscription to the hotspot. We would help maintain the hotspot um, and they would have it. And we would make sure that the hotspots or the MiFi actually would reach out beyond their building, out into the street, out into their parking lots. And as you might imagine, most of the businesses that we approached were at first like, yeah, you're gonna give me free Wi-Fi. <laughs> what's in it for me and again we said listen all we really want is for you to say put this poster up say wi-fi provided by the hamden public library um and so they were on it they said of course we'll do it and they were very thankful for it so we picked out businesses um along a, a corridor in hamden uh, it's below the center of town closer to New Haven, has a lot of businesses clustered together. And part of the reason we chose that was because the more we could put hotspots in the different businesses, the more it becomes a hotspot for connectivity. So we went with a restaurant, Alibaba's. Uh, we went with two barber, shop, two barber shops. Um, we also approached a braiding shop, and they are now hosting it, and a laundromat. And these are all places that we knew people were going to, especially as COVID was lifting. Everybody wanted to get their hair taken care of. Boy, did we want our hair taken care of. <laughs> Everybody had laundry to do, and people were starting to go out again. So um, those are the areas that we picked, and we made sure that the Wi-Fi just wasn't in the building but that it went out into the street because, you know, our, our winters are bad, but they're not really that bad. Um, it's still warm enough in February on a nice day to sit outside and use, use the computer if you don't wanna be in a store um, or whatnot. So that's one of the reasons why we went to make sure that they went as far outside as possible. And uh, we've followed up with the businesses uh, my biggest hope is that the businesses have told us that the Wi-Fi is being used. On occasion, we've had to go back in and reset the Wi-Fi because, you know, sometimes those hotspots can get a little tired um, or need to be reset back to um, whatever you call it, their origin, whatever. Uh, and so we, we go in and we take care of that and we stop by and say hello. In fact, we're going by later today uh, to say hello um, and just to, to see if they have any questions and also to let them know what's going on at the library. So it's a great way of just keeping in contact with businesses and also to give the businesses a chance to know that the library actually cares about a thriving economy.
in the town and that we're also all about connectivity um, because that's how people get information now. Wow, that I that sounds amazing. And I think the the businesses that you chose to partner with were were spot on. I think one of my one of the things I'm wondering, so can you explain? So you, so you used um, the everybody's everybody learns grant, if I understand correctly, to get the hotspots and to pay for them. So so how does that work? Are you hosting or are you paying a subscription to like AT and T or something? Um, what what's that process like? Because I, while some people I think were able to do this, I think there are probably a lot of libraries that just don't even know where to start. It's not like you can buy it, turn it on, and then that's it. Like there's steps, right? Right, right. So. We looked at different deals. We even thought about prepaying if we could, um, because we had the, the, the everybody learns money and we're like, oh, and we have to spend it by a certain date. Uh, so we thought, well, if we could prepay it for a year, then that's taken care of. Unfortunately, in our circumstance, we couldn't prepay it for a year. So we're continuing to pay for the hotspots through our, our gift fund, but we were able to get the initial set up the hotspots themselves and, and the sub initial subscriptions off the ground. We're using T-Mobile for our hotspots. We found that they have been very receptive and understand libraries in a way that, um, well, they're now Sprint, but we were using Sprint before and Sprint was a little wonky and didn't quite get the library model. But T-Mobile, I guess, has educated Sprint or whatever, and it's it's now working a lot better. Awesome. Um, so you said that you asked the businesses to put, you know, just like a flyer, um, similar to what we would do, libraries would do if like the friends sponsored something, right? So, but how did you go about sharing this information with a broader community, right? So there, there might be some people walking around outside who see the signs, but did you use your social media? Did you work with the li with libraries, with the businesses to, um, to push that? You know, I, I remember we were sheltering in place and there were moments where you just, you didn't want to look at anything, you know, I, I gained like 12 pen pals because I just had quit the world at that point. So what, what was that process like? So that, so what we used to get the word out was we used the businesses themselves. We asked them to, to use their own social networks um, to advertise. And again, these are small business owners and most of them rely heavily on their social media. So they were like, sure, no problem. We'll do that. Um, and we asked them to become friends of our social media, obviously. And then we, we thought that was really important that town leadership know what was going on. Uh, so we made sure that the mayor and the legislative council here in Hamden knew that we were providing this service and that the reason we were providing the service was again, because libraries are about um, promoting the economic well-being of a town and part of the economic well-being of a town is connectivity and information mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. spot spot on and I, and I we really had to work hard to kind of explain that during during the pandemic didn't we it's it's <laughs> shocking how many people were like books right Book, books are the low well we we don't need but gracious but the fight never ends um so are you are you still working with these you know I mean it's COVID is not over by any means um but you know we are kind of inching into two years into this, are you still working with those businesses? And, and do you have a timeline for how long you're going to continue to host hotspots there? Or are we just kind of playing it day by day? No, in fact, I've looked at it from the business point of view. Like, why would I host your hotspot if you're going to take away from me like in a month? You know, that's, forget about it. You know, you get your, my clients used to it. So we said, we'll pay for your hotspot subscription for a year. So we're good for a year. Wow. We're into it for a year. That's, that's amazing. Do you, um, I wonder if this is a weird question I have is like twofold. So from, from a, as, as someone who collects data, that is sort of my job, um, one, one of them, are you, do you, how are you finding the, the community, of, um, appreciating the, the hotspot lending, right? Like, do you have any do you have any me metric to measure um, how the community is responding to this initiative? And also, like, 
do you care that much, right? Like this might be a situation where there's a need, the library can fulfill that need. And whether we are able to hash mark on a sheet or not, it is what it is. Well, basically it's, it's the latter. So I, I feel sometimes the most important thing a library does, um, again, is building trust in a community. And um, that's not something that you can easily put a metric on. And that's what we're doing. There, I, I feel one of the reasons this project is so important to us, the Hamden Public Library at this time, is because we're trying, one of the things that we really, really, eh, we realized in sheltering, sheltering in place was the importance of libraries getting outside of their buildings and also telling our story. But part of telling a story, before anybody's gonna listen to your story, they have to first wanna kind of care about you and they have to believe that it's worth their time and their effort to listen to you. So, instead of just going out and saying, hey, we're the Hamden Public Library and we're gonna save connectivity in town, trust us. Um, our approach has been more like, we're the Hamden Public Library. We know connectivity is an issue. Um, you probably haven't even thought about us as a partner in trying to help you and your clients connect, but we can be a partner and this is how we can be a partner. And why are we doing this? Because we believe that your business is important to this town. And we believe that the people in this town need to have easy ways to access the internet, whether it's 1 a.m. in the morning or 6 p.m. at night. And together we can make that happen. Um, all we ask is that you say where you're getting the connectivity from, and that's fine. So that's basically our approach. I think that's the most perfect approach I've heard about all month. I think I think that's great. It seems probably longer, but I who knows? It's still early. Um, but I, I like that, right? Because it it almost sounds like, or it seems like you're you started and are seeing through on this initiative because it's the right thing to do, and not just so you can toot the library's horn, right? And and I. I think there's so much wisdom in there. So you're our first director on CT Pages. We did have Mary Beth, who's an assistant director, but you're our first director. So I just to kind of close up, I'm wondering, I, I know particularly now that um, reaching and supporting the community is probably on, on the minds of many directors. And I think sometimes the barrier there is how. So thank you for sharing with us an example of a how, but coming from the perspective of someone who's steering a whole ship, right? Um, you know, are there any words of wisdom or is there any anything you wanna share with, with any directors or leaders who, who watch this, who are also, just try trying to, to figure out a way to reach their community, be it through hotspotting or some other metric. That's a really hard question. <laughs> I know. I'm just I'm just coming at. I told you I come into these. I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna ask, but you. And I, I mean, maybe you answered your. Maybe you already answered that question, sort of with your idea of. Um, how your community is responding, and you know that that you're not so wrapped up in the numbers, right? Maybe that's it, but. You know, I'm just thinking if, if there's, you know, is it is it leaving, taking the risk to, or, and finding the time to leave the library and connect? Like, maybe that's what it is. Um, I don't know. I've never been a director. I, I think one of the, one of the things that I've learned um, as a result of, of COVID is... <sighs> Hmm. Wow, I could go on for an hour on this, so I'm going to try and make it as succinct as possible. Um, we allow, as, as public librarians, we allow ourselves to be as essential or non-essential as possible. So we have a choice that we can make. 
you can say, oh yeah, you know, we really are just about lending items and about having people come in and use the computer. And what does that mean? Well, that means really you're driven by the weather, you're driven by illness, you're driven by what? And there's not anything wrong with that. Bad weather happens and staff should stay home, um, should be allowed to stay home when there's a, a blizzard or ice conditions. Um, but it should also mean that you should future-proof your library by developing the services that can go beyond that immediate physicality of land. So whether that means developing virtual chat services or virtual meetings or finding ways that you provide library services such as, and I believe it's, it's a basic one, connectivity, um, that's, that's what you need to do. That's future-proofing your library, making sure that even when you physically can't be present because of horrible weather or God help us another pandemic, you've done what you could do to make your library valuable and uh, essential to those people it's serving. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time for explaining this program and um, for being our inaugural director on CT Pages. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day and we're kind of sort of almost at the weekend, kind of sort of. Um, so, you know, I hope you can take a well-earned rest because it seems like you are an amazing asset to the town of Hamden and to your library staff members. And I'm personally really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you, Kim. And thank you for all you guys do. You're awesome. You've been a huge support to this whole thing. Thank you. Thank you.